Hello, my name is Alexander Morari, and I'm the founder of IT Key Media, as you probably know. You've tuned into our podcast about Central and Eastern European startups that are in pre-Series A stage. It seems to me that we are gradually changing the, uh, mess- the, the mission uh, into becoming the Baltic uh, startups uh, that are in pre-Series A stage. But what, what can we do? That's a very dynamic uh, region in this respect. Our guest today is uh, Raul Sigur, um, the co-founder of DriveX Technologies. AI-powered vehicle inspection software for insurance or mobility businesses, in a nutshell. Terre uh, Homicus. Terre, Terre. Terre, Terre. Nice to meet you, Alex. <laughs> I think I, need, I, I have to start the learning uh, Estonian myself, okay? I know this well, is... It's, 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 it's terrible to learn, earth. sorry. I know, I know, it's, it's, it's out of this earth. You are kind of, you are guys to, uh, brought to, 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 uh, to the earth by a UFO some time ago. <laughs> Maybe, Maybe this is... Yeah, yeah. Look, so, so um, I, I cannot avoid this question, okay? Your ex in the name of the company is inspired, I think, by a pretty known company that is uh, taking uh, uh, people mm-hmm. to, 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 to Mars, I mean, to space and so on and so on, right? Is this uh, the reason or did you have any other, other rationale for the name of the company? Actually, there is a fun story, a backstory to that name, uh, because when we started uh, the company, we were participating in a hackathon, Porsche Open Innovation Hackathon. Mm. And then the original name was Porsche Wizards, the team name. But then the the idea back then was to automate car configuration, like the seats and stuff, based on your smartphone profile. And we thought it would be nice to have the name Drive Experience to make the experience of the driving better. So that's when we named it DriveX, and that the name has sticked uh, to us, even though the business has changed. Oh, oh, I understand. So it's uh, closer to like UX, uh, drive X, yeah? Mm-hmm. Drive experience. Yeah, exactly. Okay, interesting. Mm-hmm. But definitely SpaceX, you're referring to that company, has an influence. And the X uh, just, factor, X, Xs are cool. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, by chance, I'm sure, no. Uh, okay, let's move on then to dra- round one. And let's drive uh, safely to round one, the solution itself. Um, in a very, mm-hmm. very... In a, in a very short elevator speech, okay? This is like five, seven story building. Mm-hmm. So imagine you're in London, you're on a vacation and you want to rent a car. Very usually you can get a fine from the rental company after your vacation. Supposedly you cause the damage to the car. Now with our technology, you, you only need to take a picture of the car instead of the old the classic pen and paper, which is a very outdated process of inspection. And we check the images of the cars in real time and notify all parties when we have found new damage on the car. It's really that simple. We have an application, which is web-based, and the core and the APIs to make it all happen. Okay, so let's make a dialogue. I'm a client and then I want to use this in London, as you say. Mm-hmm. Um, do, I have, do I have to go through a complicated educational process or you just say, no, 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 just make pictures around and that's it. What I mean, mm-hmm. London, um, usually gray sky, I mean, very often, right? Um, although I'm in Warsaw right now, uh, Warsaw is not uh, very much different from London in this respect. <laughs> so what I yeah. mean, lighting can be weak, uh, it could be dark or, and so on and so on. What mm-hmm. are the limitations for the program right now? I mean, for the application. Absolutely, good question. So what we discovered with insurance companies early on is indeed that the image quality is the basis of all. We cannot detect damages if the you know, car is out of the frame or the car is dirty. So what we have built is also computer vision models to um, assist the user when they're capturing the image. So we can analyze it in real time and provide feedback so they can do pictures better. But obviously, um, the rule of thumb goes that if a human cannot see a damage, let's say be under dirt, then the system cannot either if you're talking about just standard computer vision and not laser detection and so on. So there are, there are limitations, but even though uh, if we can automate like 95% of the cases, there's still huge business value for, for the rental companies. 
Okay, let's uh, make a just a position, a, a, a current process, traditional process mm -hmm. versus what yeah. you were trying to uh, introduce mm -hmm. right? in a natural. So currently, I mean, I had a couple of uh, car damage situations myself, so I know more or less. I understand this is all yeah. paperwork and so on. So excluding excluding the police interaction, um, mm -hmm. all the insurance related, um, take me through the steps traditionally mm -hmm. and then how it would look with your uh, API or your application. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, let's take the insurance case, which is our main business today, which is for mm -hmm. rentals before. But what we are doing is in our region and also in the US, the main problem is fraudulent claims. That's the business problem we're trying to solve. And in the US alone, $7 billion is paid out every year because people are Define clever. this, please. Okay. Yeah, yeah what do you mean by fra fraudulent, cla yeah, fra fra fraudulent what claims? Yeah, fraudulent claims. In essence, what it is, is that let's say you have an accident and then you try to get other stuff repaired too. Like say, oh, I had this scratch. Oh, I had this dent. It all happened in the same accident, right? But uh, companies have done extensive research and the US studies show that if companies would pre-inspect the car when the policy is sold, then they can make an easy comparison, whether manually or automatically, to understand what has happened during that same accident and what was there before. So they can deny those uh, repairs that they should not pay for. So that's that's the use case that we're serving today and how it works. It's simple. Uh, if an insurance company uses our product, they just need to enter the de details of the vehicle, such as number plate, VIN code, language of the customer, and so on. They just generate the DriveX link. The link is sent with SMS to the customer from the insurance company asking, hey, please verify your car. And uh, when they click on the link, the application will run in the web browser. Uh, it looks like the insurance company solution. And they will just make, start making photos. They are guided and instructed how to make photos. And after each image, there is the analysis to provide uh, a smooth process and that the data is correct. That's also a very common mistake. You can imagine the frustration when you have done all the images and then the system analyzes all the images together and says, oh, please go back and start the whole process again. So in order to prevent that, it has to be very constant and immediate. So the process is simple and quick for the consumer. And as a result, we create an assessment report based on those images automatically. And the insurance companies really use our ratings of the vehicle, the image quality, visibility, and damages to make business decisions. Should we allow this consumer to be our client? Should we deny the policy and so forth? And so the decision-making process on the insurance company side um, is supposed to be automatic as well, or this is still human, human operated? That's a great question. So the goal obviously is automation and we have automated about 95% of cases and let's say very weird edge cases can be over, uh, over, you know, overruled right by and, human overruled. interaction. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, I understand. Okay, interesting. Uh, Rauno, one more question. Do you educate somehow your AI engine or at least you mentioned this, you say this is AI mentioned, but I, mm -hmm. I, I hope this is so, right? Um, so how do you pre-educate the, uh, the AI or ML, whatever engine before going mm -hmm. live? Have you have you gone through these processes yourself, or you just rely mm -hmm. on the live pictures from the clients, and then you gradually will mm -hmm. grow your database of images and so on and so on? I love that topic. So uh, what we do is we use uh, some universal pictures, like through uh, different partnerships we have made uh, before we even had customers through car ad platforms uh, where where we collected pictures, so we can train those AI models. Then we use synthetic data as well, like computer game stuff to, you know, generate data, different vehicle images, also damage to the car. And then we use the, also the live images. Uh, customers have given us the consent to use the images. Um, and we will not share them with anybody, but just to use them internally. So the system learns from that. So there's a basically a three ways, three step process.
Rano, by the way, I, I thought your immediate answer would be, of course, we have all the insurance companies that we work with, and we ask them at some point to provide us uh, some um, personal data free or, or, or just, just, just a picture of an element of a part of a car without number, mm -hmm. license, license plate mm -hmm. number, and so on and so on. And then all of a sudden you have millions, I, I understand, thousands, if not millions, uh, pictures in your data set. Did you try this as well? I mean, this, this is so obvious, I think. I mean, at least to try. I mean, you did try. Oh, it. yes, we did try it. And, so what's the problem? Uh, insur insurance companies, I think they're obviously a conservative sector and they don't want to share their historic database so so often, but it's possible and it's, it's it has been done as well. But uh, you, you can't rely on that um, entirely. There has to be other sources as well to make the AI really, let's say, flexible and precise. Okay, this is connected... Um... Uh, to the price price of the um, sorry pr pricing model yeah of the mm -hmm. of the application so how how do we price that and then we'll come back to this question maybe yeah? if the yeah, answer yeah. is satisfying what's <laughs> what's the pricing model behind the deal do you earn do you want to earn or this is just, just you know mission to help humanity both I guess but um, you put me under pressure now and now I have to give you satisfactory answers. I, I'm feeling sweat already, but uh, no, no, no. First, you, no, no, no. <laughs> not to feel sweaty, you, not not to feel sweaty. You have to ask uh, uh, Alex, what do you need or to to reach the highest level of satisfaction? You don't know. <laughs> Maybe my level of satisfaction is low or high. You don't, you, I'm yeah, not picky. Yeah. Go on. But uh, the pricing is actually very straightforward. We have a sub subscription uh, software as a service uh, business subscription levels. A company can either select the monthly or annual package. Yeah. And uh, the main components there are how many inspections are you doing? Uh, different levels of that. Then uh, what kind of features do you want? Do you, have, do you just want good images or do you want to have visibility checks and damage checks? And uh, do you want to uh, label it as your, your solution? Uh, like uh, you know, adding your colors and logos to ensure a very smooth and nice customer experience. And based on those criteria, uh, the ballpark number we charge per inspection, so per car, the ballpark number is between two to uh, six euros, depending what the customer wants. Wow. I am satisfied. <laughs> it's, I, good, I think good. it's... Look, 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 um, as an, a side observer, okay, none of my business and so on, but my first like knee-jerk reaction would be, of course, I would pay, I would pay you as a customer uh, to go through the system to avoid all the hackle of repeating the pictures and not being mm -hmm. guided. And I'm improvising myself where to do mm -hmm. to make pictures. I remember a couple of situations myself, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Two, to, two to six uh, euros right now. Okay, so, and the vector would be to increase that or to decrease, what would you say? Like you are more, you're more, um, you're more, should I say, ambitious on the disruption side or a mm -hmm. bigger value for uh, mm -hmm. increasing prices? Kind of. Again, fantastic question. Of course, we uh, nowadays, the startups that the situation in the market, uh, I think more and more startups uh, want to become profitable. And so do we. This has been our goal from the start to become a profitable company. Now, um, we want to increase the prices, but is there value that we're creating for the customer? That's the big question. And we are creating value and we, are, we have process in place to interview like hundreds of companies to, to extract all of that information before we even launch a product to build the best product, to have commitments in place before. But the dis disruption uh, is how uh, well and fast we can use technology and our internal costs basically of, let's say, damage detection. This is uh, this what will be a game changer because in the rental industry, what I was talking about before, you don't have like 1,000 scans per month. You have 1,000 scans per day. Uh, you know, like millions of scans ye per year. And that's why uh, the rental industry, they don't have so high mar margins as well. Uh, you have car sharing where the cost of rental is like five euros. You drive around for one, one hour. If you can make a technology that is fast, precise, and also you know attractive in pricing, then it's a very, very interesting business to be in.
Of course, then you have corporate fleets, for example, right? Then you have then all the courier uh, services, like, uh, mm-hmm. you know, what's that? What's the DHL? I mean, wait, wait, yeah. wait, wait. Taxis as well could be, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then, for example, if I... Um, yeah, somehow I like the idea of like introducing this to a big car fleet with corporations. When there's, mm-hmm. for example, a business trip and, you know, this is like... A, two or three cities to visit so picture before picture after and then mm-hmm. everybody's really doing their own business rather than inspecting the car for half mm-hmm. an hour at least okay okay uh, interesting what, so, what was interesting uh, maybe a one a small um, sentence here is that it's interesting that the insurance companies have a legacy system and they base the pricing more on the person right but more and more we we're getting data how people drive and we think that the condition oh, yeah. of the car will also matter in the future the pricing in insurance oh yeah uh, oh yeah right oh, now yeah. it's it's not it's not possible to to legacy systems and the current underwriting you know methodologies but uh, coming maybe, back to, maybe, yeah sorry sorry coming back to the pricing system um sure. to, yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so to to sell fixed fee i understand right this is the idea fixed pricing to mm-hmm. sell fixed pricing mm, probably is not ideal pricing model. model. What I mean is maybe you should A-B test with the different clients uh, in different cohorts and verticals. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, packages, I mean, sorry, not packages, like like access, access, usage, access, to, usage pay. access or pay as you go. Pay as you go mm-hmm. would probably be interesting as well, which means, so you, you need at least, I don't know, like for a big invest, uh, insurance company or similar, mm-hmm. 1,000 euro per year and then pay as you go, right? And if you need to top up, you top up at, at, at slightly higher rates, you know? And so, mm, interesting. I mean, I don't know. What do you mean? We actually, you in, our, in our business, uh, <clears throat> you know, we, we have the fixed pricing, like, but if they will go over that limit, they have to pay for ah, every the additional limit. inspection. Yes. There, there is, is a, a limit. limit. Okay. Okay. Yes. So let's say the insurance companies has a se- selected 1000 scans per month, but if they do more then we charge for every additional inspection. But it also so the more, more traditional approach. Okay, clear, more traditional yeah, yeah, exactly. approach because mm-hmm. this is not on your website from what I understand yet. And why do you not put it on the website? It's uh, actually interesting because our, in our industry, our competitors also hide the prices very, uh, <laughs> very much. But, why? Uh, we, no, I don't why? know why. Actually, we want to be the first who will publish the prices. Why, uh, why so. don't know why? why? Why don't you know why they don't put prices? Uh, I don't ask know, your insurance just... companies. Ask insurance uh, companies, clients that they are working with. Hey, by the way, why do you think they are hiding prices? Because they are what cheating, cheating on you with other insurance companies. They give, <laughs> they give them smaller fee. I mean, smaller, mm-hmm. uh, lower prices because they got the first contract with you. Okay, so you mm-hmm. you have the disadvantage of the first comer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be. It could be. But uh, we want to publish our prices, and when? we will also. Okay, when next month? Next month. Meaning next June. Month? Yes, exactly. Here's a public and, promise from Rauna Sigur, <laughs> the founder of DriveX. Next month yeah. in June, they will publish the prices. How many? How many? Uh, how many bands will be? How many packages? We have currently four packages uh, yeah. of the subscription. But uh, I wanted to say that uh, companies even don't usually allow free trials. But we believe strongly in the self-service business because there are tens of thousands of businesses who want this service. But so far, this computer vision technology has been so expensive and accessible only to large corporations. So that's yeah, why we wanted to publish publish prices. We already have self-service. We can test yeah. out the service for free and yeah. see how it works. I can test it as well? Yes. Wait, 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 wait. Where is that? There's, there's, <laughs> I'm, in the web, I'm on your website right now. So it says book mm-hmm. a demo. I don't walk. Exactly. Ah, get it's... started free. Ah, okay, okay. Exactly. You can try Up it out later 20. and let, let me know. Guys, everybody uh, who drives a car or, or has company cars and so on, for mm-hmm. trial, uh, you can scan up to 20 vehicles per month. Free exactly. plan includes 20, 20 vehicle scans, scans per month. Mm-hmm. You have team members, guys. You have a uh, vehicle verification platform, Edwin, da, da, da. Wow, amazing. Okay. Yep. Okay. Interesting. So you're welcome. Okay. 
I wanted to challenge a little bit more, but now with this information, I think I will not challenge as much <laughs> as I wanted. Maybe just a couple of questions. So first, the name itself. Let's come back to the name. Are you aware of other your brothers and sisters all around the world with the same name, DriveX? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm what do you aware. think of them? India. I think Belgium. India, Belgium. Yeah. Exactly. Belgium, India. <laughs> In Belgium, uh, <laughs> it's exact. It's your exact older brother. Older brother. I mean, they're using yep. like more older, older approach and so on. So. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. And um, we're in the process what, of what, uh, what are you doing? No, 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 no. Specific question. What are you? Do what are you going to do with that? You will crash them be just because you have all the support. You have all the logos of wonderful, of wonderful, you know, mm -hmm. uh, startup organizations and so on and so on. <laughs> and you will crash them, and so you don't care, or you will change. Uh, just to answer quickly, um, we have registered trademark, and it's uh, been opposed by some companies, obviously. But the question is, in what areas can we establish our name and the business? Because there are different segments of the trademarks, right? Um, yep. So that's that's what going is going on right now. So I don't believe we don't we have to change the name because uh, I would argue our name, the Trivax, is most popular uh, co uh, company name compared to our competitors. And also the geographics, you know, India is not really our our thing at the moment. However, Belgium is in the EU, but again, depends how the trademark, uh, let's say, conversation goes. It has been in process for about one year already. With them, like there's a conflict? Uh, not, not with the Belgian company actually, but some, some other companies, because uh, you can oppose like also similar names, like, I don't know, Drive XX, like two X's, if it's in the same segment. <laughs> okay, so, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. And there are different, like, I don't know, let's say big corporations who have a trademark in another field, something drive and, and another word so they're oh yeah yeah opposing. i can see this okay yep. yeah yeah there's a so, sala uh, something uh -huh. cashless mm -hmm. so, something exactly so uh, it's it's the usual process but uh, you know we're flexible there's a game as well addictive drift and park game <laughs> with its highly addictive gameplay and so on so on. wow interesting yep <laughs> But, uh, uh, there is a record for badminton. Stage. There is a record for ba badminton drivex. Yeah, we, I we wish you good luck. Go yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wish you good luck then on your end. Even in the even in the worst case scenario, I mean, uh, we're still early stage, and you know we could take another name if, if necessary. It all depends how the trademark opposition goes and how much cost we would need to make uh, to you know win or or have a you know even more furious battle basically. Ah, interesting, 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 really. Okay, then to put the pressure down, maybe a little bit. <laughs> and uh, and w one thing I had in mind. So if you if you say, no, maybe, maybe other way, otherwise. So in your thesis for the company and the articles that I read and so on, you say that your um, the verticals you are interested in are are many rentals. Or what's that? Insurance, mm -hmm. rentals, uh, sales, and so on, and so on. So I have I had immediate like knee jerk reaction number one. Oh wow! So for for, for guys, I think this uh, insurance game, which is pretty easy, I mean easy on the strategic thinking mm -hmm. side of things of course technically it's uh, challenging some some but you know what and how to do so maybe i think i will ask rauna whether or not this is just a pretext to get into a bigger pond should i say mm -hmm. with a relatively mm -hmm. easy go-to-market tool that everybody needs everybody wants to set to, to mm -hmm. set up the, the ground so to say playground and then increase the playground to the very process of sales mm -hmm. to very process mm -hmm. of i don't know uh setting up your own please check me on this mm -hmm. uh to, and eventually setting up your own insurance car mm -hmm. uh insurance mm -hmm. company sorry okay. insurance yeah. company <laughs> maybe I thought if I were Rauno, maybe I would be the first in com insurance company in the world focusing only and exclusively on e-mobility clients. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's, no, there's nobody like that. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Alex, I have a question. Have, have you been listening to our strategic meetings with the founders? It seems that you are very informed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> interesting. Go, I just came from one side. such strategic yeah. meeting. I just came back from one such strategic uh, meeting. So maybe I'm just in the right mood, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. But uh, it's, it's you have the right not topic. to answer. You have the right yeah. not to answer, but your uh, the but lack of answer will be treated as a positive answer. 
<laughs> well, I want to answer that because uh, there are different roadmaps we're looking at. Yeah. And uh, how we always uh, look at things is what is the best way to enter the market? Because we started with the rentals. We found out that they need a very mature product. Then we thought, okay, can, how can we build the MVP? We thought, okay, insurance companies, they have common ground that's created in the insurance. Now we actually want to step out of insurance. We want to get to the rental sector to get the AI even more precise and, and faster to get the volumes in. Okay. But I think the most intriguing part for me, because I'm a car enthusiast myself, I, I import cars uh, every I don't know, three months for myself as a hobby car. And uh, what I want to achieve is to be the technology helper for a regular person who wants to call or buy a car, let's say from Germany, from another city, from another market. So we could help them to inspect the car and to get the real condition of the vehicle. So today we're only focusing on the visual inspection, right? But we're also thinking about audio diagnostics, like hearing the engine run, like do we hear some weird knocks or something? And also the connected car data, because as I explained, we started from the Porsche Open Innovation Hackathon, where we learned that it's already possible to access the car's brain, to get data from the car's brain. Like what is the mileage? What are the fault codes? You know, you, for electric cars, what is the battery health? So if you combine all of these three things together, it's like a 360 view on the car's condition. And then we want to market it to consumers on car ad platforms, like order this inspection uh, service from the seller or use the technology when you go to the car, we will help you to inspect the car. I think this is the biggest market that nobody is addressing right now. And whoever can make it work can execute well. This is like, a, this is a unicorn company already. You mean Sunicorn? <laughs> Sunicorn, definitely, but eventually the market is big enough to be a unicorn in, in that niche alone. I take it as a hint at a pivot. Startups pivot often, um, and it's all in the name of growth. Like, what is the best uh, vertical we can go in right now? We're testing like three verticals at the moment. And uh, we're constantly measuring results. So, okay, let's put our full focus here right now. We see huge growth there. I think it's normal and that's why Estonian startups are successful because we have that mentality and, and you know, try to get there. Yeah, yeah. Let me make one step backwards then. Then mm -hmm. let's call it not a pivot, but as a spin-off probably. Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. even better, mm -hmm. even better, guys. I mean, with all the uh, yeah. all the backup and support from the wise guys and not so wise guys. Oh yeah, <laughs> you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know this joke that I I, I created like a long, long long time ago. It's some are wise, some otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. So, so you are, so you are from the wise circle. Okay, now <laughs> yeah, so. interesting, interesting, interesting. But here is then, your here is your plan for the next uh, big PR stunt and something. Uh, mm -hmm. Next year, twenty twenty three, you will set up your own insurance company for like immobility only. Of course, don't 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 shout about this too loud. You will lose your current insurance clients. <laughs> uh, interesting. Round. Let's move on. Number two competition. Of course, the doors are not opening only to you as far as disrupting or mm -hmm. introducing new buzzwords into insurance companies, uh, rental business, and so on and so on. How would you describe the competitive landscape? That's a, that's a good question. And there are more established companies out there. Uh, I think the market leader is a unicorn already. It's a fact. And it's called Tractable, a UK company. And yeah, they're they are... like 120 million more, uh, one, 120 million dollars more advanced than you are, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so let's started... take them. Let, let's take yeah. them then. Um, mm -hmm. How do you make these sparring matches with them uh, remotely, of course? Like, do you see what they do and you try to do it better, or you see what they do and you try to do completely different, or uh, on top of that, not to repeat their mistakes and so on? What's what's your what's you as a as a, as a founder, right? I understand. So you see these respected 
opponent yeah um yep. how, how do you interact remotely with them you want to crush them you want to uh -huh. to learn from them uh -huh. or like i think it's it's uh positive because they have already shown that there is a market out there and they've educated the market which is very important and they started exactly at the time where computer vision became a technology precise enough and even more precise than the, than the human eye then they started working on it they focus on large corporates and they focus on damage estimations so it's not only detecting damages but it's also putting a number to those damages like how much will it cost to repair that that's a very complex a problem to solve um, and it also means that that, ex that is expensive only large corporates can use that so how we're uh, interacting how we're competing is we're going after a different segment and we want to tap into the consumer market and also the small and medium-sized enterprises who do not need those damage estimations but just to inspect the car get confidence and and then assist them Raunut, coming back to our simulated future for your own company, I think they are one little step closer to becoming an insurance company themselves. Would you agree? Definitely. Um, definitely, I, I agree. But I think they won't do that. I think uh, they're still, uh, they want to focus on AI and their product and AI is amazing. I have to give credit, credit to them. They worked really hard on that. Okay, I will take this as a diplomatic uh, answer. Thank you. <laughs> Next round, round three, quick Q&A, and this will be just a quick uh, one, one question, but I really like to ask you, what's your productivity hack? Not the tool, the way you do things. Productivity hack. I think uh, deep work time, like putting calendar blocks in the calendar to like, uh, schedule my time and, and activities I need to do and the Eisenhower matrix for the tasks that I have to do urgent not urgent important not important so blocks blocks are how big ch uh, time chunks uh, you would you would call a block F five mm -hmm. minutes you know 15 minutes one hour it's uh, between 15 minutes to two hours depending on the task uh, like how I think how much will okay it take? and those tasks Interesting. And those tasks are only personal for yourself or including a team? It's like all mixed for, for myself, uh, mainly. Oh, and we okay. Have, we have stand-ups. We have uh, weekly calls. We also have uh, sprints where we put like, what is the number one priority for me for the next two weeks? And the whole team needs to know each other priorities and their own priorities. And then we review how did the last sprint go the two weeks and what did we learn? What yeah. are the next goals? And this, all okay. of this has to relate to the company level OKRs and the team level OKRs. Okay, during those blocks that you say everybody mm -hmm. has access to calendar and they see you're busy this uh, two hour yes. uh, slot. What, what are the rules for this two hour? They, they are, people are not allowed to advance, uh, to approach you or they can mm -hmm. with, if there is a red alert or something. What's the technicality behind this? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, they just <laughs> can't book other meetings. And I just close uh, my communication channels for, for that time being. I'm still learning to do that because it's hard. I want to be like notified all the time and what's going on, but it's something that I just need to learn to be better at. Uh, so I, I wouldn't react immediately because people might, uh, might write me, might contact me, but the question is, how do I react? Do I, allow, do I react immediately or is it okay to respond in, you know, when I have free time? So that's a good takeaway for founders. You set up blocks and then you say, everybody, the rules are this. Um, this is mm -hmm. as, like I'm open for communication, but communication is asynchronous, meaning if mm -hmm. I if I if I treat it as important, I, I appear on this channel or something. If I think yes. it's not where they can wait, I'm back to this after my block uh, block time mm -hmm. is over. OK, exactly. And Last question here. So I understand your blocks, you want to close yourself and so on. You put on your headphones to pretend you listen to music. And this is a sign not to approach me or I will kill you and something, something. But you're <laughs> physically in an open space in the sense, right? You don't, you don't have your own corner office mm -hmm. in a mm -hmm. office tower. So how, how does that work? So what's that, what are the signs other than online calendar that you mm -hmm. are busy and don't approach me? Uh, <laughs> there are no, maybe my facial expression. 
but uh, <laughs> other than that, <laughs> other than that, there are no signs uh, that I uh, that, that I use. It's just that in the open area, and it's also like we invested into the new office, right? We have meeting rooms and so forth. So we're trying to enforce like, okay, is it okay to have a meeting in the open room? No, no, it's not okay. Go to the meeting room, but uh, you know, people have their own habits. We're trying to change that so that would not affect other people's effectiveness. But I guess mm. uh, there there isn't yeah, a sign or something like, uh, <laughs> please don't approach me. Maybe I, I should think about that. That's a good point though. Yes, yes, yes. Now you're thinking. <laughs> and look, look, this second. Yeah. So all the sticky notes, I had to set up so sticky notes a different color. So, mm -hmm. oh yeah. Um, so, so if you say you can approach with, you can approach me with uh, important stuff like yellow, somewhere mm -hmm. on the side of your computer. Don't approach me red. And for example, this is only the red sticky note. Don't mm -hmm. approach me, yeah. okay? But don't forget to take it off the computer, <laughs> or you will go, you will go without the contact for two weeks. In the office. That's a nice one. That's a really nice but, one. But 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 I think really if if honestly I think this could work, but also only for some like your top top five. How many people you are right now in the company? We have eleven people full time. So but yeah, most, eleven. Half of them are remotely. Yeah. So in the office, all the founders, co-founders, and directors of the verticals, like head of marketing, head of, mm -hmm. can have the right to do this. Okay. I mean, this would be mm -hmm. fair, I think. Yeah. And also, yeah. kind of a nobility. You know, no. How to say nobilitation? Um, uh -huh. No, like like a special status. You know, to those guys as well, because they mm -hmm. have the strategic uh, tasks and so on. So allow them to be effective when they need that. Okay. That's great. Rauna, thank you very much. Let's move on to round four, the company. So mm -hmm. I will go through some milestones. Correct me if I'm wrong, and we move on, okay? Because time, time, time uh, yep. asks us to be quick. So founded just before Christmas, 2019. Exactly. As a reason, as a reason for a party, I understand. Founders are Rauna yeah. Sigur on your screens, guy, CEO, experienced business executive with a track record of more than 10 years. Um, Kenty Koppel, CTO. Uh, Walter Lal, CPO, right? Product development mm -hmm, exactly. and uh, value to customers. Okay. Now um, you are 12 right now, I understand. You have teams, um, I mean, full time, you said, full time. Mm -hmm. Sales, marketing, tester, developers, engineers, and so on. How many remote? We have uh, four people remotely, no, five actually, and uh, from Czech Republic and Hungary as well. So altogether, uh, just below 20, I understand. Okay. Uh, no, it, it's, it's actually 11. So altogether 11. Pretty small team, and we're trying to keep it small, uh, um, you know, <laughs> to before we get to product market fit. Oh yeah, okay, okay. Are you hiring right now? Uh, no, actually, and so uh, it also corresponds to the market developments. But we feel that we have all the key positions right now. I don't want, we okay. don't want to hire. We want to keep the burn rate as effective as possible. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, look, look, look. Um, maybe I should correct. I said uh, higher, but I would probably should say, are you recruiting now? You know, mm -hmm. meaning, uh, meaning you as no. a CEO <laughs> and all of your all of your guys in founding team, I think should focus not on hiring. Maybe this is the wrong wording, mm -hmm. but on the recruitment and be honest, of course, with your potential uh, uh, candidates. Look, yep. next year or by end of this year, when we hit this, this, this milestone, we will definitely need more, mm -hmm. I don't know, customer success or or, mm -hmm. or or maybe sales in new markets and so on and so on. And yep. delegate somebody delegate somebody from your marketing sales team to keep an eye on talent in your next ma markets that you want to uh, mm -hmm. that you want to expand to. Why? Because when you have a decision to go to Germany, to Poland, to US, whatever, then your investors and uh, you will be pushing the team, and they will be you know stretching too much. I think um, mm -hmm. you know this is like it's not my advice; it's taken from books and so on and so on. But I oh, think okay. like you are on good track on good track to you know expanding at some time with all the support mm -hmm. and all the wonderful hoodies you have and so on. Um, so if you keep recruiting as one of your tasks. Um, like strategic level task, right? And spend, I don't know, one hour a day, uh, sorry, one hour per week or so, or every decision maker in your company uh, meets for 15, 20 minute slots with potential uh, mm -hmm. people for, for positions that you will need when you hit like 
n plus mm -hmm. one level of milestones or n plus oh, yes. two level mm -hmm. of milestones you know we actually have the plan uh you know investors want to see that plan when you raise money which we did so we have the hiring and recruiting plan of course however of course. however today uh we're focusing on meeting those rental companies we just expanded the product team hired developers and also hired in the sales and marketing people so we have everything we need for now but obviously we have milestones for the end of the year and uh, but for now the really the most important part is having those meetings with actual customers having first yeah, pilot yeah, agreements yeah. and doing experiments learning from them and then um, getting results hopefully <laughs> and then uh, looking at the hiring plan like okay now we have to do the next stage so you're perfectly right Anyway, uh, anyways, founder CEO, I think should probably treat themselves also as a selectioner, or how do you say this, a scout, scout manager, scout director for a professional, let's say, football team. Yeah, they're always on, <laughs> they're always on the lookout for new, mm -hmm. not necessarily stars, but you know, for mm -hmm. new, for new fitting uh, profiles, right? Yeah. Um, and moreover, it keeps you in the good shape in the good like CEO shape also. Mm -hmm. And also mm -hmm. if you speak, for example, if you plan in half of the year or so to go to Germany, for example, and speak to a couple of marketing, mar the relevant marketing profile uh, candidates from Germany, mm -hmm. you get to know market intel. I mean, you get mm -hmm. market intelligence for free, mm -hmm. but then mm -hmm. you are of course open and straightforward with them. Guys, we're not, we're not ready to hire now, but when we are, yeah. we will be quick and so on. If this is great for you, let's discuss. 15, 20 minutes, okay? Mm -hmm. And then exactly. everybody, you know and then you get market insights now that you mm -hmm. can factor in your strategy for expansion and so on mm -hmm. totally we actually uh were hiring a business development manager but i thought okay actually the sales team is not for now but it's uh, there were over 100 people who applied to the position and i i mm. contacted 40 of them saying that wow. okay actually we decided not to hire but i believe in building relationships so let's connect on linkedin let's talk and you know some of them ask okay but i really want to work that's maybe i don't know be commission-based work at the moment in sales so it, it also shows like how people think and maybe there is another opportunity there but yeah building relationships uh, that's that's what i believe in and the example you brought same thing around the things let's move on to last but not least Round five, Formula F3, we call this fun funding for the future, okay? Let mm -hmm. me just go again through a couple of uh, milestones. So I understand pretty recently you got 1 million investment round uh, close with mm -hmm. uh, Depo, Ven uh, Depo Ventures, plug and play uh, ventures, but also you have all that hu huge like dream dream team, should I say, of um, angel investors, right? From uh, like startup wise guys, fund fellow mm -hmm. founders, but also Eric Caillou, uh, ex wise guy, Oliver Albert, Tavi Modeberg, Atikut, mm -hmm. uh, Christian v Vilosius, Marco Virkebau, uh -huh. Tavi Roivas, Miko Silventola. Guys, if mm -hmm. I miss somebody, sorry, but th that's, that's quite an array. That's also, I think it's also opportunity, but also responsibility right mm -hmm. i think uh, oh, yeah. oh, and, yeah. and, and and ongoing challenge uh, so so all in all 1.3 million dollars more or less right uh, total external mm -hmm. funding by now um, what are the key milestones what two or three milestones for this uh, investment round mm -hmm. so we want to achieve 50k mrr and okay. to be profitable uh, by okay, 50k uh, MRR, you think you are um, about when to, to reach when? The goal currently is by the end of this year. Uh, so we're working hard to, to get there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the second metric is uh, how many new markets we have entered and how many new clients, new partners, because we're building also a partnership strategy here. Which I okay, talk interesting. This much. is interesting. How would you expand to another market through a partner? Who would be this partner? Well, there are different options here, but uh, yep. first of all, other big ins uh, software providers uh, in the rental field, in the insurance field, like putting our technology as a part of the ecosystem, as a module, which their clients can select. So training them, the partners, explaining the product and then uh, finding business together. That's, that's the goal. So amount of partners and customers in new markets and also the how many consumers like 
buying a new car, right, from another market, how many cars have we pre-verified? And then the fourth, I would say, is how many unique vehicles do we have in the database? That's that's another metric we're tracking. Yeah. Okay. Rauna, thanks. Thanks a lot for the chat. I think we covered so many things that you and I could expect we would cover, but so many that we couldn't expect. And this is just a result of a of a, um, I think some kind of a sparkle uh, during the conversation mm -hmm. that we both agreed to fire up, so to say. Yeah, oh, thank you yeah. very much. I tried, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I tried to be, you know, challenging, provocative, and so on. And I think you survived. And um, good luck with the company expansion. And uh, thank you very much. I think this is a very, very good approach. And especially um, over the weekend, by the way, we're recording this on Friday. Over the weekend, I will mm -hmm. definitely test the uh, test the system for myself mm -hmm. fantastic alex it was so fun talking to you can't wait to hear the episode and the other episodes so keep up your amazing work Rauno, we should keep in touch uh, we will write an article if you haven't yet and uh, do promise promise to share the update just before you launch the site uh, pricing uh, on the on your mm -hmm. website okay all righty thanks alex we got the promise thank you all the best see you cheers bye success bye bye